Right, hello everybody again. Uh, so what I thought I'd cook today and make for you all today is a really old fashioned dish which is going to be uh, meat and potato pie cooked in a nice beer gravy. Um, and we're going to serve it up with some nice chunky chips. So we're going to show you how to make chunky chips, a quick and easy way of doing those. Um, and it's, a, it's an old favourite and we'll serve it with a really nice gravy. But we're going to make an old traditional pie with a bottom case and a top case. So, um, right, let's get going then. So, what we're going to use for this dish is chuck. Um, just get the pans on nice and hot and get my cocotte pot on. My cocotte pot is my um, casserole pot, which I'm going to cook, cook my uh, mix in. So I'll just get those warming up nicely. Beautiful. Lovely. So what I'm going to use is I've chopped, pre-chopped up is what we get again, what we said before is mirepoix, which is diced onion, diced celery, diced carrot. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that into the cocotte pot once that warms up and get that sweating off. This is the filling bit we're going to make now, so it's going to take a few hours um, because obviously we're going to use chuck, which is um, part of the blade of the beef, which is around the shoulder part. Um, so it does take a lot of cooking down, a lot of rendering down because you want it to really be, when you get it in your mouth, it kind of falls apart as well. Don't want to overcook it, so it's nice and steaky in there. But obviously if you undercook it, it's going to be very, very tough. So it's very important that you get the cooking right on this. Okay, so I'll just get my cock pot nice and hot. Um, also my fry pan as well. Right, so into my cock pot, I'm going to put some onions. A few more onions, yeah, beautiful. My celery. And my carrot. And I'm just going to sweat that all, sweat that all off nicely. Yeah. That's sizzling away nicely now. Now, what you can do, you can put the beef in here. What you want to do is you want to sauté the beef first, um, so get some nice colour on it. I'm just going to do it in a fry pan. The only reason I do it this way is because I just find it easier. Um, and then I'll add it to this and then make up the mix. So straight into here, nice and hot. Get all my beef in there, yeah? Beautiful. I'll just leave that there so I can use it again. In with some nice seasoning. Perfect. Right. So I want to get that nicely sweated down, like, like we said before, really get out the flavours. Um, I'm frying the beef, as I said, in a frying pan separately, just to get colour on it, and then I'll add it to that. And then I know that I've evenly cooked all the beef, because otherwise it's going to get a bit full in there. You might get a lot of juice out of the beef, you're going to get a stewy effect, so you're not going to get what I'm looking for with, with sautéing the beef. Right, so while that's sweating, I'm going to make myself a little bouquet garni, which I'm going to put in with the, uh, during the cooking process. Now, normally this would be thyme, bay leaf and rosemary, but I've only got thyme and rosemary at the moment. So I'm going to get a bit of, um, bit of thyme and a bit of rosemary together like so. I've got myself some, some of my butcher's string. And all I'm going to do really is just tie it into a, what they call a bouquet. And the reason we do this, because then we can put it into the cooking process and then we, we want to take it back out at the end. We can just lift it out as one. So it's really a handy little thing to do. You can also make your string a bit longer if you want to make it easier. Just tie it to one of the handles. Happy days, but I'll just drop it in there. I'll just fish it out with a set of tongs at the end. So my bouquet's there, ready, ready for action. So it's just a case of getting all this sweated up nicely. I say it's not a long job. Once you've got everything diced, that's cooking away nicely. 
Just leave that beef. Right, so everything's cooking away nicely. You see my vegetables there, lovely and they've sweated down. They are starting to get really nice and soft. No colour on them. Um, that's what we mean by sweating out the flavours. My beef, which I'm frying on a high heat, really starting to get some crispy colour onto it now. So, and I say I've really got like, stayed in control of that, this part of the dish, because I've cooked it separately. So, you see there on the beef, really starting to get the colour now. So, that's looking good. right now. So that's near enough there now. Always wiping down a good chef is always wiping. Never stops. Right, so I'm gonna add my beef now into my um, mirror pro. There we go. In it goes. Love that. We'll just give that a nice little stir around. Turn that light off there. Give that a stir around, get it all mixed in together. Right, so next into this, I'm going to add some tomato puree. So I'll get a dollop of tomato puree in there. That should do lovely. Give that a nice little cook round. Just leave that to cook out for a minute or so. Yeah, that's looking the pot. That'll also, the tomato puree will work with the beef and the gravy that we make around the dish um, and enhance the flavour. So that's why that's in there. Now, what I'm going to add to that next is um, Purity Ale. Purity is a brewery that's just down the road. And I believe it's the only beer you can get at Warner Hotel is at Studley Castle. So I'm not trying to flog Studley Castle, but if you like your beers, it's a great bitter. Right, straight in with my purity ale, which I've just nicked off the bar. Give that a little stir around. Love that, that's looking the part now. Now before that, normally when we're doing a casserole, we'd probably add flour. So then when we've got the casserole with all the juices in, we put it in the oven, it would self thicken. But there's a reason why I haven't done that, and I'll show you that when we get to the end of the dish. Because I want to make the gravy in two stages and I'll explain that later. Also what we've got is beef stock. So we're going to straight on the top of the beef stock, just cover the meat. So we make a nice gravy, that's perfect. Might just sneak a little bit more seasoning in there, not a lot, because I've already seasoned the vegetables and the beef. Give that a good stir around. In with my bouquet of garni. I'm going to bring that to the boil and then I'm just going to simmer it. Right, so, next job is I'm gonna prepare the potatoes for my pie. So I've just got some potatoes there, basically what was in Tesco's at the moment. Um, so right, that's lovely now, that's starting to boil up. So I'm just gonna turn the heat down, because I don't need to viciously cook it. It's probably gonna take, I don't know, an hour and a half to two hours. Um, but obviously the only way to test is just try the meat. If it starts to feel that it wants to fall apart, bang, you're on the money. Take it off the heat. Put on my lid so I don't lose my, um, my gravy. It stays where it needs to be. It hits the lid and comes back into the, into the pan. I don't reduce. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly peel my potatoes. Use a peeler or a knife. I just find these potatoes easier with a knife. And all I'm going to do is just dice them up, put about that sort of size. Okay, get my pan. So what we're going to do next is make the pastry. So I'm going to probably make about a half kilo mix. So I've got myself 500 grams of plain flour into my bowl, um, 250 gram of butter, 
I've diced that up. Some salt. And I'm just going to make this into quickly into a crumb. If you get your butter to room temperature, it's very easy to get this done. Um, but they say using cold butter is the best, so it's a bit more work. So the pastry we're going to make is short crust, so it's one of the one of the easier pastries to make. Right, nearly there with that. Speedy, eh? <laughs> right, lovely. I've got that into a nice crumb now. Nice fine crumb. Just going to make a little well in the middle. Into that I'm going to put one egg. You don't have to use egg. I just like to use a little bit of egg and mash. Of course, a little bit of water. And just mix that in from the inside, incorporating the outside into it. Right, as soon as I pull that in together into a ball, just a little floured surface, just pop it on the surface. A couple of needs, nothing much. Don't want to overwork the pastry. Right, perfect. I'll just shape that up into a ball quickly. Um, I'll just get the cling film. What you must always remember to do with pastry is, is um, let it rest. So I'm just going to cling film this up. I'm going to pop it in the fridge for about an hour and then before I even attempt to roll it. So that's my pastry nice and rolled. I'm going to pop that to the fridge and then in an hour's time we'll get that out, we'll roll it and we'll show you how to make the base. Okay, right, so next on our list of things to do will be the pastry. So we're going to do the base of the pastry of the pie first. So my pastry's been resting in the fridge for an hour or so. I'm just going to divide that. One side a little bit more than the other, because I'm going to use a bit more to make the base rather than, I'm, than I would make for the top. So I'll just get the cling film, cling film that bit back up till I'm ready to use it. Just cling that one back up. Like so, pop that in the fridge. Right, so, gonna make our base. Before that, I'm gonna get my, um, my tin. Um, it's pretty much non-stick, but I like to be safe, so. I'm just gonna get a piece of parchment. Quick fold, very, very simply done. Nothing too technical. And my scissors. Cut myself a little circle. Perfect, straight in the bottom of that. That's ready now. So, I'm gonna roll my base, a little bit of flour on there, not too much. A little work of the dough, get the warmth of my hands to soften the dough perfectly. Right, let's roll the dough. Oops. Just keep moving the dough so it doesn't stick to the base. If you feel it's getting a bit sticky then just a little bit more flour over your rolling pin really. That's the only place you should really need to put it. One more time, I think we should be happy days. That's all up. Yeah, we want about the thickness of a two pence piece, they say. 
Right, that should be happy days then, I think. Just double check. Yeah, perfect. Roll it back over my pin. Get my um, pastry case. Fage very, very gently now. Place it inside. Push it in around the edges, like so. about right. Use a knife if you want, but I'm just going to use scissors, find it easier. Just trim around the edges. Might save these off cuts, make some leaves or whatever. Let's put on the top of the pie. Just want it hanging over a little bit, I don't want it hanging over loads. All right. Push one more time. Right, perfect. So, what we're going to do now is blind bake. So, I'm going to get another piece of parchment paper, a little bit bigger this time. Just trim around it so it's... Um, See if that's big enough, hopefully. Yeah, that'll do, lovely. Get my parchment paper in there. Now, what I'm going to use is baking beans. I've seen people use other things, but, you know, once you've brought baking beans, you've got them forever, so... Um, the, the best to do with... Oops. Little mistake there, but I'm sure I'm chef. Just... Um, Going to prick the base. This will stop it rising. Um, the baking beans will mainly stop it rising, but always prick the base. Right, on with the parchment. In with the baking beans. When you're using the baking beans and you're blind baking, one little tip for you is make sure you push the baking beans into the edge of the tray um, to keep it all nice and even as it bakes. As you can see. Right, perfect. So, right, I've got my pastry, got my baking beans in, put it on my baking tray, and I'll put that in the oven. I'm going to cook it on about 140. You can cook it on high if you want. Um, I'm going to cook it on 140 steadily. Uh, secret is don't take the baking beans out too soon because you want the base to cook um, and stay flat. So, my pie's done. I've took that off the heat now. The meat's just in the situation where it's starting to want to break away, but it's not, it's still holding. So that's in perfect, the perfect situation. And what I've done is I've strained all my, um, my stock off, off the pie. And what I'm going to do now is make the gravy. So, as I said before, I didn't thicken it as I made the pie filling um, because I want to make my gravy in two stages. I want to make the first part really thick and then what I'm going to do with that is use a little bit to bind the pie because I need to keep my filling as tight as possible so when I cut my pie, it doesn't kind of fall apart. And then what I'll do, once I've took that out, I'll make the, the, the remainder into a thinner that I can serve them with the pie. So, to make my gravy, I'll get my pan on. I've got some butter. A couple of knobs of butter there, straight in. Get that melted down, yeah. A little bit of olive oil, it's just help the butter stop burning. It's a quickler. We'll get that melted down, yeah. So what this, this bit's called is making like a roux. So we're gonna, what we're gonna make is a dark roux. So we're gonna cook out our roux so it's not white, so it becomes more browny, then we should get a bit of a nutty flavor through from the butter and the flour. So, 
that's melting down nicely. Get my flour ready. What I want to do is slightly tint the butter um, so it gets a bit of a browny colour, so it's foaming. You want to keep your eye on this bit when you're doing this because you know butter can burn quite easily. That's nicely melted now. So I'm just gonna let that foam for a minute, get a bit of colour on that butter. Technical term for that is burn rose, which is burnt butter, but so you want it a goldeny brown as the butter starts to go like that. Right, you can see that's starting to go now, it's starting to just tint a bit round. So what you want to do now, you want to be careful of, is obviously you don't burn it. Starting to foam lovely. Right, so I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I'm going to add some flour to that now. You see that colour on it? As flowers it in it, it's starting to darken, starting to brown already. So what you wanted to get it into is like a bit of a sloppy ish pasty kind of thing. And then that's perfect that is. It's already started to light in brown anyway already straight away because I've got the butter nice and hot. Um, so I'm going to leave that to cook out for about 10 or 12 minutes on a really low light so it really starts to brown the flour and butter mixture. So my butter and my flour has cooked out nice, it's gone nice and brown, nice and sloppy. You can really smell the nutty flavour coming from the flour and the butter. Um, and now I'm going to add my stock. Just a little bit at a time, got it on a low heat. It's going to get a lot of steam off this. And I want to get it all infused in. So, as I was saying, I'm, I'm making my gravy separately. Um, and what I wanted first was to get it quite thick so I could bind my pie with it. And then what I do is add a bit more stock to the gravy to so make it nice so at the end when we serve the dish we can pour the gravy straight over the pie. So I've got this gravy exactly where I want it to be. A nice, thick, rich, full of flavour. I've added a little bit more seasoning and that's perfect. So I'm going to take that off the heat for a second. Right, so I've got my meat that's done. I'm just going to make sure I get the last bits of the, any really loose moisture off there. You see all the meat, it's all held together lovely. None of it's gone stringer. It's all ready to fall apart in your mouth. So, should be happy days, yeah? So get all my meat in there. I'm gonna make a really nice full pie, so hopefully it should be bang on the money. So, that's it, perfect. Meat's done. Beautiful. Now my potatoes, I've just lightly um, cooked them off, so they're just cooked in salted water. I'm gonna add a few potatoes in there. You can have your pie, you could have it like meat and then potato on the top, but I'm just gonna mix it all together. And then what I'm gonna do is get a little bit of this nice thick gravy just to bind it. That's all I wanna do is just bind it. But keep it very, very tight, the filling. So I'm going to be very, very gentle now. Just give it a little mix round. So I don't want to break the potatoes up or damage the filling. And that is basically what I'm looking for. Okay. So that's the filling of my pie done. I'll put my gravy back on the heat quickly. Just finish that off. Should take a couple of seconds. Shouldn't take long at all. And all I'm going to do is add some more stock to that gravy. 
just to get it to pour in consistency what you'd expect the gravy to be really not as thick two second job really that's the last of my stock going in there now so I've got myself some nice gravy to serve with the pie I'll just test that a little touch more seasoning that's lovely that is I can really taste the rosemary and the thyme and obviously the beef and that's a lovely glossy gravy that that's beautiful so right we'll turn that off now until we need it later yeah? right so my blind baking's done so I'm just going to remove my um, baking beans like so perfect you see the base has sat down nice um, but I'm going to put it back in the oven now only for a couple of minutes I'm just going to get a little coat with egg wash gentler which will um, just add us a bit of a protection on it a bit of a guard nice and gently does it there we go perfect Right, back in the oven, a couple of minutes, that's all, just to, just to get that one cooked off nicely, yeah. Right, so the pie's out of the oven, still slightly warm, but it should be okay now, so I'm going to trim the edges. Um, you can use a knife, but I just find the best and easiest way to do this with, with a peeler. Just nice and gentle, don't want to break it. Quite nervous doing this because I've only made one pie, so <laughs> there we go, bang on. Hey. <laughs> so clear that up in a second. Right, so next job I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll my lid. So I've got my pastry that I saved. Let the warmth of my hand bring it back nicely. Yeah, that's good. It's quite an easy pastry to work with short crust, so as long as you don't overwork it, try and only use it the once. You can re-roll it out and use it again, but anyone will tell you virgin pastry is always the best to use. I think that should be about it just a little bit of there right that's bang on okay leave that there for a second get my pie i'm going to put my filling in now if you made too much filling don't worry about that because you can freeze this down and make another pie another day or you can you know put a bit more gravy with it and just have it as a casserole throw a few more vegetables through it and whatever but we'll see how it goes. Get all this, more of these potatoes in there. Plenty of meat in there, as you can see. But I want to make a really bad boy pie. So get it nice and filled up. I think that will do. Right. A little egg wash around the edges. So the other pastry will stick to it nicely. So you see the filling's quite tight. Um, so hopefully when it cooks, and then when we cut it, we've rested it and we cut it, it shouldn't go everywhere. It should um, all sit quite nicely, yeah? Just get a bits in there, in the, in the edges on it, so it's nice and full. Yeah, that's bang on. Right, happy with that. So I'm going to roll my pastry, just let that sit over the edge of it. Like so, get my scissors again. But what I'm going to leave is probably 
uh, 20 mil overhang around the edge because I want to make a crust for it. Right, that looks about it. You could roll this back out and make a few leaves if you want to on the top, but we'll see. And then I'm just going to see I'm just folding her back in on herself. Like that, so she sits just neatly on the top. Well, that's perfect. Then what I'm going to use is my two fingers and just, just squeeze it. and make a bit of a crust, so when it cooks, you've got that nice homemade crust around the edge. You can use a fork at home if you don't want to do it this way. All right, that's perfect. All right, happy with that, to be fair. Right, so now we're going to give it a really nice gentle coating of egg wash. Egg wash is just egg and a bit of milk, yeah, just mix it together. What you can do as well, I might do is, well, when it's through going through the cooking process, just pull her out, give her another wash with the egg. It won't do it any harm. Right, voila. A couple of holes to let it breathe. And that, me old mate should do. Back onto the tray. And let's get the oven door. So I'm not trying to balance. Let's give her a cook. I put her on for about 25 minutes. Um, if you feel then it needs a little longer, you can always add it on for a little longer. Right, so I'm going to make some chunky chips now. Um, it's better if you get big potatoes to do this, um, which unfortunately I haven't got at the moment because these are from Tesco. But hey, oh, we'll just try and chop them as chunky as we can, yeah. Um, now, the way I do them, I mean, I'll twice cook these. What I'll do first is I'll turn my fire down to about 120. I'll blanch them so they cook through, but they don't colour. And then what I'll do is I'll hit them again at about 170. Um, and they should get them nice and golden brown and crispy. Yeah. So just chop a few of these potatoes up into homemade chunky chips. Chunky-ish, should I say. <laughs> well, I think that'll do. Right. I'm just going to drop these in the fryer. Right, so, pie, it's out of the oven. And to be quite honest with you, I think that looks pretty good. So um, I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is let it rest um, before I try and cut it. Um, plus, it's going to be red, red hot to really start moving about at the moment. So we'll just let that rest for 15, 20 minutes. Then hopefully we'll get it out. Our chips will be redder. We'll get it cut. We'll get some gravy on it. And away we go. But on the whole, yeah, happy with that looks the part. So, my chips have just been through the fire. They've been through on 120, probably been in there at least 15 minutes, uh, maybe a little less. Um, they're nice and soft, so they're cooked all the way through, but they're obviously lacking colour. So what I'll do is, I'll hit them again in the fryer um, on about 170, um, and hopefully we'll get some nice colour and get them nice and crispy, yeah? And we'll serve those with our pie when it's um, serving time. Right, so pie's out, that's ready to go. Chips are cooked, just give them the second cook, so they've got some nice colour on them now. A little bit of um, sea salt over that, a little bit of crap black. Perfect. Right, tricky to get the pie onto the old um, plate. So I'm going to bring the plate to the pie, on she goes. Oh wow, look at that, eh? You see what I mean when I said, like, um, keep the filling tight, it's held together, love left. It's all sat in there, everything's in there that should be in there. Turn the board around, you can see it's not spilling out everywhere. Really happy with that. And it's not dry either, it's got a little bit of moisture in there. Cool, so we're gonna put a few chips on the plate. Just 
look at them on there like that. Nice and crispy chips there. Twice cooked, so we cooked them on a low temperature first in the fryer, and then we increased the temperature for the second cook to get some colour and a bit of crispiness. Vegetable wise, you can serve whatever you want with these. Peas is probably a, a favourite, but um, I mean, I'm from Nottingham, so we'd probably eat mushy peas with them, with it like, but I've just got a few green beans that I had knocking about, so I'll stick a few green beans on there. And then going back to when we did the dish, like, and we said, like, um, with the gravy, I've turned the rest of the stock into a nice, um, a nice glossy gravy. Um, and then I'm just going to lap that straight over the top of the pie. Boom, look at that. Oh, mate. Have it. So, here we go. So we've got classic, best of British meat and potato pie. Um, we cook the meat and potato pie in Purity Beer, beer, which is a brewery that's just a couple of miles away from Studley Castle. And Studley Castle is the only place you're going to get to drink Purity, so I'm not trying to big up Studley too much, but there you go. Um, some nice crunchy homemade chips and some sauteed green beans.